Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Crime Weekly News. I'm Derek Lavasser. And I'm Stephanie Harlow. And we're going to get right into it. We're not going to waste any time. So here we go. Last week, Danny Masterson of That 70s Show was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for two rapes. He had been convicted in May after three women testified that he had sexually assaulted them at his Hollywood home between 2001 and 2003 at the height of his fame. Masterson's use of drugs to incapacitate his victims had played a prominent role in the case. The women testified that he offered them a drink, which quickly made them feel intoxicated, a level of intoxication that did not match up with what they had consumed. He will be eligible for parole in roughly 25 years at the age of 72. Now, there's another wrinkle to this. Ashton Kutcher and his wife Mila Kunis, who were also members of the cast of That 70s Show, are under fire for writing character references for Masterson, asking the judge for leniency in his sentencing. And I got to tell you, I'm not a huge social media guy, but I have been seeing it and there's been some developments in that whole situation since. But I will let Stephanie take the lead. Yeah, so this is a weird situation. I didn't think we were going to Yeah, I never ever... thought this, would, this wasn't on my bingo card, that's for sure. Well, um, so in my opinion, Ashton and Mila did not think that anybody was going to see these letters. Bingo! <laughs> that's on the bingo card for sure. Yeah. Um, and that was clear in their apology video, which we're going to play. Uh, that that they that they had no idea that these would be publicly available. But it's kind of what I always say, like anything you do in the shadows, just assume that people are going to see it. That way you're always trying to behave above reproach and you're not like, you know, because they seem stunned and a little like put out. I'm sure out. they were pissed. Yeah. They seem a little put out that, that people saw the letters and it's like you shouldn't be angry about something that you did, you said with your chest, you know, which they clearly did because I'm not going to read the the entire letters. And it wasn't just Mila and Ashton. It was a bunch of bunch of people um, that Danny knew. I think like yeah. the guy who played the Red Foreman. On the show too, right? Yeah, but there they're the was most a famous. Ton. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're the most famous, and I also think like at the end of the day, Ashton Kutcher's role and relationship with Thorn, which is you know a nonprofit that's supposed yeah. to fight against sexual violence against women and children. Yeah, he's been fighting like human trafficking as well. Like he's all, he's testified at, you know, right. li- li- uh, state level, maybe even what is it, national level uh, yeah. proceedings. Yeah. Yeah. So so to be affiliated, and you, he started that organization with Demi Moore. His, I think they were married, right, back in the day? They were married Demi- back in the day. I don't know if he was they, married at the time, but they were. They started Thorn together. So, um it's like, how can you believe something like this so publicly, but then say and then go and basically support somebody who has not only been accused, but been charged and convicted at this point? Like, this is not a an allegedly kind of situation. Danny Masterson did this. Scientology has been covering up for him. Scientology has been helping him get away with this. I mean, these victims were a part of Scientology. So anytime you have a cult like this where um, silence is is golden. And basically, Danny Masterson's been referred to as like one of the untouchable members of Scientology. So I don't even know what the hell that means. Like at that point, like you could do whatever you want and get away with it. And these women were shamed. They were shunned by their family members who are also in Scientology simply for coming out and stating the truth. And so to have Ashton and, and Mila write these letters is like just another layer of um, disrespect and and completely not – not re- not not valuing the experiences of these women because uh, you you had their victim impact statements which Ashton and Amila weren't even court for when these women talked about how Danny Masterson's abuse really affected them negatively how it hurt their lives how it hurt them and to have these letters come out now like I said I didn't think they they ever thought we would see them it's just a very much a slap in the face so I'll give you a couple highlights from Mila and Ashton's letters because it's not like they wrote this judge and they were like, oh, you know, he was our friend. And we really think that, you know, maybe you should go easy on him. It, like they went hard. So Mila's letter, she says, from the very beginning, I could sense his innate goodness and genuine nature. This is somebody that's been convicted of two rapes. OK, and the only reason he wasn't convicted of three rapes is because the third got dismissed. She said, in an industry where the pressures and temptations of substance use can be overwhelming, Danny played a pivotal role in guiding me away from such destructive paths. 
Danny's steadfastness in promoting a drug-free lifestyle has been a guiding light in my journey. Moreover, Danny consistently displayed a profound sense of responsibility and care for those around him. He demonstrates grace and empathy in every situation. His steady support and understanding presence made him a reliable source of guidance and comfort to us all. I wholeheartedly vouch for Danny Masterson's exceptional character and tremendous positive influence he has on me and the people around him. Like I said, just a few highlights from Mila's letter. It's ridiculous. You could have just said, like, hey... You know, he's our friend. We like him. We care about him. We know he did bad things, but like we we think he can be rehabilitated or whatever. But you're like literally going so hard. I wholeheartedly vouch for his exceptional character and tremendous positive influence. Now we go to Ashton's letter. He said, as a friend, Danny has been nothing but a positive influence on me. He's an extraordinarily honest and intentional human being. Over the 25-year relationship, I don't recall him ever lying to me. He's taught me about being direct and confronting issues in life and relationships head-on, resolving them and moving forward. As a role model, Danny... (laughs) As a role model, Danny has consistently been an excellent one. I attribute not falling into the typical Hollywood life of drugs directly to Danny. He also set an extraordinary standard for how you treat other people. We have spent countless hours together with our kids, and he is among the few people that I would trust to be alone with my son and daughter. So like I said, there's one thing to defend your friend or or want to not see your friend go to prison until he's over 70 years old, but to come out and say like he's a role model, exceptional character, um, an extraordinary standard set for how you treat other people. He's never lied to me in 25 years. So did he tell you that that he did this to these women or was he not upfront about that? Because I would consider that lying. It feels like they are saying, in my opinion, we don't necessarily believe what these women are saying because this is not the person that we know. And that feels disrespectful. And I also am confused because I remember, like, I'm old enough to remember when Danny and Wilmer Valderrama and Ashton were all, like, up-and-comers. And they were always out at clubs, dude. Like, they were always out at clubs. So I'm not sure what they're talking about, like, Danny's promoting this drug and alcohol-free lifestyle. Maybe since he's been in Scientology, right? Because... You can't do that stuff in Scientology, and they do seem kind of preachy about that kind of stuff. But I don't think that that's like that saved Mila and Ashton when they were on that 70s show because it seemed kind of like they were all in that scene. But anyways, like I said, these letters came out, and then Ashton and Mila released what will, I think, go down in history as the worst, most awkward apology video to ever exist, and we're going to play that right now. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. So, like I said, weird, awkward, it's super tense. Many people have been saying it seems like Ashton and Mila were reading a script or reading off a teleprompter. And to me, Mila seems especially annoyed or angry to have to have made this apology. Um, I, 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 some people have been saying it's because she also was groomed. You know, all these clips have been coming out since this went down of Danny and Ashton talking about Mila because when she was on that 70s show, she was 14. I had no idea, by the way. She was 14 when she started on that 70s show and she was like making out with Ashton Kutcher because they were dating on the show and Danny bet Ashton $10 to stick his tongue down her throat. She was 14, right? And Ashton was over the age of 18 um, and in a bunch of stuff. And I think like Ashton said, oh, said something about... um, Hillary Duff once on Punked, he was like, oh, she's one of the girls we're waiting to turn 18. Like it was a different time. And I understand that it was a different time. Humor was much more like crude back then. People felt much more free to say what they wanted. But definitely like some people are saying Mila was groomed on the set of that 70s show. So she's almost like a Stockholm syndrome victim at this point. 
And I mean, there's just been a bunch of drama. There's been a bunch of drama about it. Like I said, the whole Thorn connection is kind of sketchy. Now it's coming out that um, one of the victims who uh, Danny Masterson attacked, she's gone on social media and she said, Ashton, like, don't forget that I was on speakerphone when you called Danny on this certain date. And I know what what the plan was. And I heard everything. And I think you're just as sick as your uh, role model or mentor or something. And basically the date. So now everybody's going and looking up the date. And it turns out that this this woman um, was murdered on that date. And Ashton was supposed to go on a date with her. And he said he went to her house and she didn't answer the door. And he looked through her window and he saw like what he thought was red wine spilled on the carpet. And he was like, oh, um, well, she must have stood me up. And then he left. But now with this victim of Danny Masterson's coming out and saying, like, I was on the speakerphone that night when you called him, people are starting to wonder what actually happened. And a couple people close to the situation um, and close to Scientology, specifically, um, I think his name is Aaron Smith Levine. Uh, I actually talked to him when I was doing my Scientology series, which I've stopped because I've been threatened and harassed to no end. But he said, no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't that Ashton was responsible for her murder. But there are, you know, some rumors and speculations out there that maybe Ashton was able to get in the house, saw that this woman had been brutally murdered. She was apparently the victim of a serial killer and she was stabbed like over 40 times and then worried about being embroiled in a murder investigation, started calling people like maybe people on his team, his friends, things like that, and saying, like, what do I do? And maybe one of those people is Danny Masterson. And Danny was like, get the hell out of there. Like, don't do anything. Don't call anyone because you don't need to be like, you know, right now with your career on the up and up, you don't need to be like a suspect in a murder investigation. You don't even need to be connected to this. And so basically this woman is saying, like, I heard what happened and you're just as sick as your mentor because instead of calling the police that night, Ashton allegedly dipped and and kind of just like let things go the way they were going to go. So I know I said a lot. What do you think about all this? You said way too much for me to (laughs) weigh in on all of it. So I'm going to keep it focused on mainly what we're talking about tonight because there's a lot there, right? But what we do know is that Danny Masterson has been convicted. So at this point, we're we that's it. What these things that he's been accused of, there has been enough evidence put forward that he's been found guilty, period. Uh, So as far as Ashton and Mila are concerned, you can have a relationship with someone And at the time when you know them, either they haven't gone down this dark road yet or you're just not aware of it. But either way, once that you find out about this type of information, whether it's a family member or a friend, if they are responsible for doing these types of things to other people, you cut all ties with them, especially if you're a public figure. Uh, And the fact that they chose to do this based on the person they knew at that time is, is I think, a a misstep. And I'm sure in hindsight, they're really regretting doing it. But I will say, they... Even though they knew Danny back in the day and that's what they're basing a no, lot of No, they know their, him still. They're like they know super it, tight. They yeah. hang out all the time. Their kids play together. Like, no, they did not just know him back in the day. Like, they, they still be tight, man. Like, right. Even right, you know... During the time that he's been in Scientology, during the time that he's being, been accused of these things and he's on trial for these things, like they have been friends with him. Right. So my, my but my point being that when this occurred, you know, I'm sure they're going back to those days and being around him, going out to events with him and not seeing any type of this, any type of behavior like this being displayed. Yeah, that may be sure. what, they're, what yeah. they're basing it off of. But the reality is, as they know him today and they're friends with him today, you really would think that and I know what this is just me personally I believe they have an 8 year old daughter together I don't know what her age is but I believe she's 8 and it's like just put yourself in the shoes of their father and their mother for a second that imagine if it was your daughter that was at this guy's home who they're already probably a little nervous about and you know they got a crush on him cuz he's famous and he takes advantage of the situation and there and takes advantage of them and they're traumatized by that for the rest of their life. And even though they've gotten this guilty verdict, they're, they're never going to be the same. That's not something that... Are you saying Ashton and Mila should put themselves in the shoes of those parents? Of those parents before writing those letters. I mean, Ashton said that 
Danny was one of the few people he'd feel comfortable leaving his son and daughter alone with. So. Right. And that's and and that's that's problematic for me. You know what I that's mean? That's problematic it's one of those, for me too. Yeah. So it's one of those things where if you're putting yourself in the shoes of the parents, even any form of letter that suggests, even suggests or gives the the idea or the notion that, well, maybe these women aren't telling the truth based on the guy that we know is disrespectful to those women and shouldn't have been written. It's pretty simple. I know they weren't there. Hopefully they weren't there. Hopefully they didn't know about anything. I'm going to I'm going to go on a limb and say they didn't know You're that this happened. You're giving them the benefit of the doubt. They, given the benefit of the doubt, say they didn't know this happened, then they have to rely on the judicial system. And the judicial system found your friend guilty of these crimes. So when Danny Masterson's team comes out or family comes out and says, hey, will you write a letter for our, you know, for Danny to try to get his sentence reduced? They know he, he has a he has a child as well, I think. Yes. Um, personally. A daughter. Yeah. Personally, I would have said, listen. This doesn't look good for me. I, I really can't that simple. put myself in, in a compromising it's, it's, position. It's, it's, I'm sorry. It's yeah. that simple. You know what I mean? In this society we live in today, I know the guy that I know. But the jury found him guilty of this, and this is a pretty severe crime. And so I and they should have like talked to their lawyer or something because this stuff is publicly available. I think I think it's one of those things where they didn't believe it would get to be this big. But again, it's court record, it's public record, it's obviously yes. going to get out there. <laughs> and you know, I, they should have they made a misstep. They should have just not said anything at all. And just to uh, weigh in on what you said about the video. I was really surprised by the video because Ashton was a little better. Yeah, he a little. So, he, so, he sounded a little bit more sincere. Genuine, yeah. But he's an actor, so it wouldn't be hard so for him she. to turn it on. That's my point. She's an actor, and she and she's not a bad actor, by the way. No, she's so, good. So, so the fact that she was so blatant in her, like, I don't think that was unintentional. Like She looked like full of contempt am i wrong I, I feel like she almost didn't want to film the video and maybe she felt like this is ridiculous that we even have to do this we were you know yeah putting a letter off our friend because my point is if she wants to act she can act so i don't and she was only reading short lines she could memorize those lines in her mm -hmm. sleep so i almost feel like this was the way she did this was deliberate to let people know that hey i'm putting this out here because in the world we live in today this is what I have to do, but I don't. I do not agree with it. I, I feel like the way she delivered it was not by just coincidence. Because again, like I said, they're both very talented people, and they could have memorized that entire script, sat there and delivered it with tears and everything if they wanted to. I feel like it was done in a manner where they felt like their hands were tied, but they were both against doing it. They felt that it was foolish that they were having to explain why they did it for a friend they had known for so many years and in no way did it, you know, suggest like that the no self-awareness, man. It's like, I can't believe that we have to do this. And then what did she start with? We support victims. We have historically done so. Like she sounds angry. Like you just because you support some victims, you're not supporting these victims at this moment. And the fact that you can't like marry those two things together and see that it makes you look hypocritical and see that it's incongruent with the public image that you put out. Because I know Mila on Twitter was very active during like Me Too and um, what, what was the other one? Like You're Next or What's Next or whatever. I can't remember all these hashtag campaigns. But she was super like vocal and supportive of it. So what you've put out to the public is incongruent with what these letters are showing. You have supported victims, I suppose, but you're not supporting these victims. And that's what we're talking about right now. So talking about how you've supported other victims just seems like you're sort of like trying to shift our attention and, and trying to almost make us like feel guilty and gaslight us for even having a problem with you doing this. Yeah, no, I agree. Overall, it's one of those things where I don't have an issue with them being in disbelief about someone they'd known for so long doing something like this. I've had hundreds of cases where they've had, had long enough to come to terms with it, though, don't you think? Well, I, either way, my point being, there have been family members and friends that I've had to inform that they're significant other or relative or whatever had just done something that was unfathomable like you couldn't believe that they would do it but the reality is they 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 did 
And that happens all the time. I say, all you know, you never know who you're encountering, whether it's a neighbor or a, a friend. They don't know what their intentions are behind closed doors. And there's no exception here. You might have known one version of Danny. There might have been a different version that you were maybe Who's you were lucky and you were never exposed to. Huh? Right. Danny's also an actor. So of course, yeah. So he's yeah, going to be able to to put out an, an image and, and maybe even keep that image up with like friends and family and stuff. But I think it was Christina Ricci that also tweeted out something and she was like, good guys can be rapists too or something, you know, basically saying like somebody can be super good to you and terrible to somebody else. Yeah, of course. And that's and completely possible. It happens all the time. So just because you didn't witness it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And you should probably not be writing letters on their behalf, especially when it's such a publicized case and you're a public figure. And you have so much to lose, I, man. Yeah. Like I did. You know, I actually, to kind of add some like personal touch to this, I'm not going to say the name or anything, but I grew up with a guy who I'm now not very close with, but still friends with. Um but he was someone who I grew up with and had he had worked on cars his whole life, never been arrested before, never really drank, never smoked weed, but loved cars. Like he was one of the most talented people, uh, like taking apart and putting together cars. And he was like big into the Fast and Furious movies. And mm -hmm. he had some of the most beautiful cars because he would like upgrade everything. It, it, very, really talented guy and actually a very nice guy. Long story short, he's a little older. I'm a cop at this point. He built out this really nice, really fast vehicle. And he didn't have a lot of money because he's spending it all on his cars and stuff. He lived with his parents. But this guy comes to him and says, listen, I want you to deliver a package for me. You don't look at the package. You drive it to New York. You drop it off. You come back. That's it. You have a nice car. That's it. Don't ask any questions. The less you know, the better. It was a lot of money they were giving him. So not saying I would have done it, but he decided to do it. And long story short, he goes to New York and somehow along the line, somebody got pinched and ratted on him saying that he would be showing up with the product. Damn. Where he made a mistake was when he got into New York, it was federal, right? It was federal agents. He decides to try to take off. So he gets in like a small car chase around New York. Nobody gets hurt. Nothing happens. But overall, it didn't help his cause because now it makes him look even more guilty, even though according to him, he never opened the trunk. Never did. Now, I believe him. Regardless, I believe him. Do I think he knew that something was in the trunk that shouldn't yeah, well, be there? Yeah, I mean, obviously. Of Somebody's course. paying you a lot of money to deliver of it. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, that was his way of kind of rationalizing it, right? I'm not saying I agree with it. Again, former detective here. I fought against this every single day. But he went to prison and he got the book thrown at him. First time offense. Never even been arrested before in his life. But it was a federal charge. You serve 80% of it. And he was going to be in prison for the next like 10 years. So I, I felt like I knew him well enough to know and had been around the drug game long enough to know that he got the low man on the totem pole got pinched. They gave mm -hmm. him whoever got caught, gave him up. So I thought he should do some time, which he, he did. He did almost four years. But I did write a letter. They asked me to. His parents asked me to. I wrote a letter just saying that he absolutely should be held responsible for what he did. But being in my profession and knowing how it works, if they gave him up, that's because he was expendable, which usually means it's a mule, which usually means it's a guy who doesn't really have all the in and outs and they're willing to give him up because he doesn't know anything. Because the, the federal agents, which were doing the right thing, were going to reduce his sentence exponentially if he ratted on the bigger guys. He didn't know who they were. He couldn't give it. That's the whole, that's the way the structure was designed. He really didn't have anybody. So he got hammered. I think he did three or four years in prison. He's been out for probably five or six years since. Hasn't gotten even a traffic ticket. He's going to his own car business. He's got beautiful children. He's worked on my truck for me a couple months ago. He's a good guy. Just, and I say this always, sometimes good people make bad decisions, but that's a case where I'm a public figure at this point when I wrote it. And not to Ashton Kutcher, I'm not comparing myself, not to their level, but it was something that I considered. It was something that I considered knowing it was going to be a and public record. And it's not record. even like close to what happened here. And Completely you different. It, yeah. But even in my point being, even yeah. in that circumstance. You thought you had to think about it. I really thought yeah. about it and, and, and talked to multiple people and got their opinions on it before deciding to do so, knowing what could happen, knowing that this could become public information. And how would it look optically? So, you know, I'm not saying I understand what they went through, 
But considering the, I mean, I the severity thought, of the crime. I don't think they gave it much thought, Derek, is what yeah, I Yeah, like, clearly not. Because if yeah. they had, or if they'd talked to other people and been like, do you think this is a good idea? Somebody might have said, like, probably not. Yeah, and, and if, if this person had done something like that in this case and been found guilty of it, it I can no. tell you right now, would not have written the letter. So You wouldn't yeah, even I have mean, to think about it, though, Derek, right? No, right? no, 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 yeah. no. Can't, can't be attached to that. Yeah. I don't stand for that. And is and at this point, you have to believe the woman. She, you know, the, the facts are out there. It is what he it is. He went and, to trial. He's convicted. Like, he's convicted. That's it. Yeah, this <laughs> the, is for the sentencing. There's a, and there's, ton, there's tons of evidence. We don't have to get into that right yeah. now. There's, like, DNA evidence. Like, there is evidence. Right. And there's evidence that these women were threatened to shut their mouths by members of the Church of Scientology. Like, the evidence is out there. So at this point, it's like, what are we fighting for here? What are we fighting for here? Their friendship friendship and loyalty have a, a limit, and they should, and they should have a limit. And I'm not no, going to say I'm it wasn't a hard decision, and I'm not going to say it sucks to know somebody for over two decades and find out that they were a completely different person than you thought they were. That sucks. That has to be hard. But at the end of the day, you either have that realization like this person wasn't who I thought they were. This is this is a person who has the capability to be bad and hurt other people or you're in denial about that and you refuse to accept it. At which point, like, what can we do with you? What can we do with you? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's it's not a good circumstance. And I'm sure can't make the victims feel good either to hear this and to know that maybe people they were fans of at one point. Are they, out there. they knew these girls, dude. Yeah. They knew them personally. At least oh, Ashton okay. did. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. So backlash is warranted. You know, they got to answer for it. Do I think it's going to get them canceled to the point where they won't work in Hollywood or anything anymore? No. No, probably. But uh, lesson to all the famous people out there. If someone you know or Shut someone up. you've worked with commits a crime like this, maybe don't write a character witness statement uh, when it's public Trying record. Trying to get them a more lenient sentence. Yeah, probably. Let, probably them, just, let them serve the sentence they, they deserve. Yeah, let the, ju- let the let them figure it out and uh, whatever they decide, it is what it is. And to think that that would sway the jury or the judge, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's what if different... it did, dude? That's Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. What if this judge is a huge fan of Dude, Where's My Car? You know, and he's like, oh, Facts. Ashton, maybe. Yeah. You know, Good you point. never know. It's human. It's good, human it's to point. be biased. It's human to be persuaded into certain things. By celebrities, yeah. By That's celebrities true. who have influence. So, like, what if it had affected his sentence? Yeah. Well, I'm glad it didn't. And I think this will be a lesson to many others. Uh, any final words before we wrap this one up? No. no. All right. As always, guys, listen, I, I we'll save it to the end. We didn't hit you with anything at the beginning. And it's short notice, so it's probably already passed when, you know, when it would make a difference. But CrimeCon... One week. Uh, if you have a ticket, we look forward to seeing you there. There might be some day passes left. I'm unsure. I'm getting a lot of emails about the meetup, the meet and greet. I've answered some of you in the discussion boards and it's on not DMs. One week. It's it's like twelve days. Well, yeah. It's so it's like a little over a week. So, so. this will go out before Crime Count. Yeah, this will go out. But as far as like buying a ticket at this point, it may be too late. By the time you get it, you might only have like a yeah. couple days left when you when you see this. But for the meetup, if you're in the Florida area, and Florida's a big state, so it's not all that close, but if you're down there, we will put something on social. The reason we haven't yet is because we don't know when and where we're going to be there, but we'll try as soon as we figure it out, when we find out our schedule, we will give you guys a heads up on the Crime Weekly Instagram page. We'll probably repost it, but if, if make sure you're following Crime Weekly Instagram. And, and that's the best source because mm-hmm. I'm going to definitely put it up there. I'll give a date, a time, and a location. Even if you haven't bought a ticket to CrimeCon, you're more than welcome to come by. We don't know how long we're going to be there. So if we say it's at 7 or 8, make sure you come by as soon as you can because what we might do, which we did in London, we started at one place and then we kind of rolled to other yeah, we, places. we rolled around. So I don't know what the layout is down there, which is why we're holding off. But if that's something you're interested in, and you're in the area, make sure you're following Crime Weekly on social media, and uh, we'll see you there. That's all I had. Yeah. We're good to go? Good to go. All right, guys. G2G. <laughs> Everyone stay safe out there. Stay tuned. Crime Weekly this Friday on audio, uh, and then YouTube on Sunday. It'll be the Michelle Lawless, Lawless series, part four. 
part four of five, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we'll see you soon. Be safe. Have a good night. Bye.